News Talk Weather. Thanks to the AA. For great value van insurance, go to the AA.ie. Those heavy showers will continue this evening, but it'll become drier and clearer as the night goes on with the risk of frost. Lowest temperatures of three degrees to one below. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. How's it going? You're welcome along to Thursday's Off the Ball. Nathan with you on till 10 o'clock. Richie McCormick is here as well. How are you? How are you? Uh, look, there's no point pretending it's a normal day at the office. It is not. The coronavirus is very much dominating everybody's thoughts right now and ours as well. Thursday of Cheltenham, usually around the office, Richie, I would say, is a pretty relaxed atmosphere through the years. People are pretending they're working, but there's a little bit of side action going on here and there. I've never known Cheltenham to pass off with uh, so much disinterest. Uh, Putting it mildly, obviously, all day, everybody who's working on the news team has just been watching the sporting fixture list be absolutely decimated uh, for the coming weeks. The GEA, the IRFU and the FAI have all followed the government's advice. They've all called off their fixtures for the next two weeks. We are going to talk about that uh, with uh, all three bodies uh, over the next hour or so. Obviously, as everyone knows at this stage, all the schools and colleges are closed. And there's a lot of important things happening right now. And if important things are happening while we're on air, we will bring them to you. Our colleagues out in News Talk are working very hard as well. So if anything happens, we will keep you right up to date with that. We will, though, be here with you over the coming weeks on Off the Ball in the evening on the radio show. OTBAM will be here as well. And obviously, sport at this time is unimportant in many ways. But if there are moments over the coming weeks where you need a bit of something else, uh, we will be here. We will have plenty of content coming your way over the coming weeks. So do stick with us uh, every morning and every evening. Joe Malloy is on the line because part of the new normal here on Off the Ball is there's going to be a lot of people working from home. And Joe, yes. good evening. We're in the Joe Malloy house. We're it, in the nerve centre. It's, it's night one, so I don't think we should go all Derbyt Bannon just yet and get the full Malloy household <laughs> experience. Let's save that maybe for a quieter time next week. But you know, Joe, we get a lot of abuse generally on a Thursday night from people about Golf Weekly. But I see right now the Players' Championship is going ahead and golf is going to continue for the next month. So welcome to Golf Daily. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's all we have. It's all we have. Uh, today was a very surreal day, wasn't it? We have mm. the misfortune to be living through interesting times. And I think today is the day the reality of the next couple of weeks and months is probably hit home for a lot of people. Well, I was talking to Chris Wilder, the Sheffield United manager, earlier, and I was remarking to him, like, a week ago, people were joking about Liverpool not being able to win the Premier League title or not being able to lift the trophy, and everyone had a bit of a laugh and a joke, and there's a Liverpool-Manchester United rivalry, where now it is just normal. Nobody, I think, expects we will get to the stage where Liverpool supporters will be inside Anfield watching their players lift the Premier League trophy between now and May. No, correct, and what a surreal thing for them. I mean, of all the possibilities that you might have given them at the start of the season or around Christmas time for how this finale would arrive. Nobody was predicting this. And I must say, even I did a small five-minute thing with Ivan Yates earlier on in the show, and you're listing out the, the situation and, okay, things like, and Richie will have all the details in a second, like GAA cancelled, obviously, to the 29th of March in keeping with what the government are advising, all of that uh, kind of stuff. But it, it was actually surreal to be saying things like Le Keep are reporting that on Tuesday, UEFA will announce the postponement of Euro 2021. Now, that's TBC, and it comes with um, a, a warning, therefore, but the keep, I'm sure, have their ear to the ground on this story. And when you're talking about events of that magnitude just being postponed a year, very surreal. And yeah, the Liverpool one, not, you know, I mean, look, if it was, if it was Manchester United's uh, fifth title in seven years, a couple of years ago, less of a big deal. But it's going to be very surreal to watch them parade around an empty Anfield with a trophy. I guess you don't do a parade, do you? Mm. A lap of honour. Why well, would you? No, not, not at this stage. And look, I guess it's, it's a positive thing that people are reacting to this in the mm. right way, that you can say that Euro 2020 is going to be pushed back a year and everyone just accepts it and says, yeah. you know what, this is the right thing. And you can cut the fixture list. And in fact, it's the sports that are ongoing that are the ones. Like mm. Cheltenham. We'll talk to John Duggan later and see what sort of a bubble people are in over there. But it does feel, and maybe it's a different attitude in England, and been watching Boris Johnson over the last couple of hours where they're taking a very different attitude to how mm. they're going to try and cope with this, and they're not shutting schools just yet. They're advising people if you've got a bit of a cold, you think you might have symptoms to stay indoors for the next seven days. They're, they haven't quite gone anywhere near where we have gone in this country. So yeah. obviously the feeling at Cheltenham is different, and their advice is to keep going. But it feels... and do get in touch, listeners, what's your sense in this, that 
the reputation of Cheltenham in this country is going to be damaged forevermore by their decision to continue with this festival. Well, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, that's what everyone's going to say. It's ridiculous. And the writing was on the wall early this week and they pressed ahead and they pressed ahead today. I mean, if a PR battle is important, which I don't suspect it is in, in the current climate, but if it is to any degree, put it behind closed doors today. Announce to everybody, do you know what? We're done for obvious reasons. Everybody accepts it. That they have pressed ahead uh, today uh, beggars belief. Uh, it's, a, it's a dreadful decision. There's no two ways about it. It will age terribly. That decision will only look worse. I think uh, the public health officials will have a real conversation about Irish people returning to the country and they'll make the appropriate decisions, but they will be having that conversation. And that Wales, Scotland and the Six Nations appears to be going ahead on Saturday. Again, just strange. I think most sports have uh, come to the reality that it's going to grind to a halt and there's a, one or two hanging on out there. And, well, like, not in the UK. Like, there's going to be 50,000 people at Ibrox tonight for Rangers mm. versus Bayer Leverkusen. Leverkusen have already taken the step of saying in a week's time that there'll be nobody in the Bayer arena for that game. The Ibrox and Rangers, under advice, of course, from those above them, are saying that it's OK for fans to mm. attend. It's, it, in the face of things, it's absolute lunacy. The fact that the Six Nations game of Wales and Scotland will be going on with fans present is madness. And it's yeah. only ad added to the fact that there's so many people coming home from Cheltenham over the course of the next day or two back into this country after mixing with God knows what. It, it's scary. It's genuinely now, I scary. Was, I was reading, because uh, the three of us clearly are not health officials or experts. Mm -hmm. I was reading up on the Wales-Scotland game to see what the justification was and the advice that the Welsh Union are receiving, even though I think the head of the rugby Welsh Union there is a bit concerned at the situation, to say the least. But the advice they are receiving is that this is OK to go ahead and they're from experts. It's just from our vantage point, it looks strange. But they're not they're not going against advice. We should stress that. But in light of, I suspect, the announcements you're about to bring us from Ireland and beyond, it's very hard for us in the public to understand why exceptions seem to be being made for certain events, that's for sure. 53106 is the text number, one in from Tommy and Navin. The Irish media haters beating down on Cheltenham and the Irish people who attended it need to stop being hypocrites. How about the Irish people who attended Anfield for the Atletico Madrid match and the various English Premier League games in the last couple of weeks? How many cases of COVID-19 will arise from those idiots who travelled over to support English soccer clubs? There's so many um, Merseyside journalists today in particular saying in the cold light of day the fact that that game went ahead last mm. night and the fact that the Football League have announced that the games are going to be going ahead as normal. Premier League are yet to follow suit. Mm. But the fact that that went ahead as normal last night, again, that's going to be looked back on with a major shake of the head. I would also say to that texter, we're not admonishing the people who went. Like John Duggan went and he's working at it. Uh, Johnny Ward is at it. Like thousands of people are entitled to go. They're also entitled to assume that if the decision has been made to go ahead with the event, then it's appropriate for them to attend. So I don't think anyone who comes back from Cheltenham or, or comes back from Anfield has to apologise for anything. I mean... It's up to the organisers of these things mm. to make the judgment call. Wait, what can what can somebody who bought their ticket for the Liverpool game or for Cheltenham months ago, what can they expect it to to be expected to do except listen to the advice and and if it's going ahead and public health officials over there are saying it's fine, like I don't I don't think the vast majority of those people coming home have any case to answer at all. You know, I think it's it's down to the the uh, decision makers. So we'll go through in a moment all the various sporting events that have been cancelled. The Premier League as it stands is going to go ahead this weekend. Uh, we'll have two live games for you and off the ball on Sunday. We're not going to travel. We have the ways and means of being able to broadcast these games from here in Dublin. But like, from your I, bedroom. From, from my bedroom. I, well, I heard Dermot and Dave <laughs> on Today FM yesterday morning where they were testing out, uh, as much like we're doing now, the uh, various scenarios and being able to broadcast from home. And Dave was presenting the show from his bed. Oh, Literally nice. hadn't even got out of bed. Surely that's not good enough for a projection of the voice into a microphone, though. Like, if you're like, if you're if you're lying back, like Joe, you wouldn't be doing this lying back, would you? You'd be like, fully. You're fully. I could see you there with for want of a better term. You're fully erect. You're sitting there upright Sorry, in your what? chair. He's sitting upright what? in his chair. He's not. <laughs> he's I thought that was out of shot. What? <laughs> <laughs> you're not lying back, going. Oh, that's uh, just terrible for the sport. Uh, you're, you know, giving this the full due uh, attention that it deserves. I'm, I'm sitting up straight and proper. Yes. So. Yeah. How far are we going to go and search for live sport over the next couple of weeks? Like, I, I, I got my wife bought one of those little um, table tennis sets that you literally attach to your kitchen table. Oh, they're class. So can I just set up a a, a um, phone? 
stream it live, <coughs> my two lads yeah. just playing table tennis and 100%. pass an hour. That's just been going to become... 100,000 viewers. That's rapidly going to become the fast show sketch with the competitive dad where you shove one of them out of the way, take the bat mm. off them and then just, you know, pummel the other one in the game repeatedly over and over the again. The Players' Championship is progressing at Sawgrass. Even by Sunday, even Richie McCormack will be watching the golf and excited about it on Monday. So the attitude of um, oh, the PGA going, Tour, and listen, it's no great surprise when you go through some of the companies that are still playing Formula One. Yeah, let's rock on until uh, we literally, some of the team members have contracted the coronavirus and they have to cancel the Australian Grand Prix. The PGA Tour say for the next month, up to the week before the Masters, they are going to keep playing, but without any spectators. Now, I've seen a lot of the golf journalists say, and this is, this is part of the issue with the Premier League as well, of the yeah. behind closed doors. Like, it's not as if there's nobody there. So for a golf production to happen, you need several hundred people working on that. Mm. And a lot of the golf journalists feel that by the time this comes to Sunday, that the players themselves will say, no, we're not, we're not putting up with this. And obviously in golf, the players hold all the power. Horse racing Ireland's to a degree have done that as well. Like a lot of the measures that they put in place, uh, like only one groom per horse, et cetera, et cetera. Like they've, right. they've put a severe restriction on the amount of people that are involved with each horse heading to the course, even though racing will continue and will continue without fans. So again, they could arrive at a situation in a week or two's time where they say, just say, listen, this clearly isn't going to work in its current guise. We'll just put the brakes on and go from here. Uh, but it's admirable that in a lot of cases, in, in the case of the, the League of Ireland, the likes of John O'Sullivan, who's been involved with a number of clubs across the league, pointed this out. And people have been asking, why just not have the games go ahead like Horse Racing Ireland yeah. are? It's because they end up costing the clubs a lot of money because they budgeted to have people at these games. And if the games go ahead without people there, then essentially they're going to be out of pocket. Whereas they just wait to play the games when they can have a number of people there. It's going to benefit the clubs in whatever sense. Now, they're going to go through hardship between now and whenever football mm. resumes. But ultimately, that's the situation we're at. Well, we're going to talk to Stephen McGuinness from the Players Football Association of Ireland in around about 15 minutes' time on just that. And as I say, Chris Wilder of Sheffield United uh, was talking to him a little bit earlier on. He's very good because he's come through the lower league ranks and he was very much not in favour of playing games behind closed doors, which would be an option for the Premier League because so much of their revenue comes from the television deals. But that for clubs lower down, if they're expected to play matches behind closed doors it will be catastrophic for them because of the lack of revenue. So just postpone the season. Uh, so we'll uh, wait and see. Deccan Arklow, you may do the dad cast on live radio, lads, for something to do. I, there's well, there's you, a watershed issue there, surely, isn't you're, there? You're, Given what you was going about. You're, you're laughing about it now, but... <laughs> yeah. Tune in on Monday. You might have to tone it down a bit, though, Nathan. Yeah, dear God, there'll be a lot of content, I feel. Two weeks. And the wife might actually hear it kids, this time. Kids at home. <laughs> we might have to do a wife's episode. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? That's two hours right there. Wow. We are sorted for content. Lads, the Players' Championship in the US is being played behind closed doors from tomorrow's play, so you might correct that comment, says Mark in Limerick. I think we're fully aware of that and yep. mentioned that. Mark, hey guys, strange times indeed. So can I just say thanks for still popping into my life at 7 o'clock. Not to be disrespectful, but you guys are the kind of distraction we need, says Ian. We won't take any... Uh, disrespect from that but we will be here uh, every night from 7 o'clock and OTBAM as well so keep the comments and we have lots of other bits of content coming uh, we'll have Brian O'Driscoll Ron O'Gar we'll have lots of great rugby stuff over the next few weeks the football show will continue every night as well from 9 o'clock and Joe Malloy the internet had dropped temporarily so I don't see how this could go wrong in the <laughs> coming weeks but uh, he is back are we, are we going to see any of the, the Malloy abode or is the, are there privacy issues? I'm in two minds. I mean, I think when content runs scarce in okay. five, three to four weeks' time, you get the full tour several times over. I, I have, I, I'm, I'm not uh, too private to tell you and the listeners, you know this, but I have uh, moved into this house in the last uh, four weeks. So I'm actually, back. I'm actually sitting, I was about to go, I'm actually sitting on the floor. I have no furniture, oh, really. No. So the, it will, maybe, maybe, now I'm just thinking on the top of my head here. Maybe we do a series where over the next uh, two months we decorate my house with advice yes, from listeners. Absolutely. You know, we, take, we do polls on, on, on uh, what colour we paint this wall, that kind of thing. Could, would you have the uh, talent to create your own furniture? Would you be able to build a seat? <laughs> do I look like I could build a seat? I'm I so, can't put together not. an Ikea seat. The only person I can... <laughs> some reason, that guy in Sex in the City, Aiden, who was like a craftsman, comes to mind. Yes. Yes. Big fan. I don't know that. I just watch it all the time. It's a great program. Yeah. Fair play. Like that, he's, the, he's the only man I can imagine being able to create his own furniture. I could not do it. Ron, uh, yeah, what's his name? Uh, Ron from uh, Parks and Rec. He could definitely do it as well. 
we were thinking of doing a uh, what box set to watch. So we'll all, as a off the ball oh, listenership, I've got one of a sun. So maybe on Sunday night. Well, maybe we'll get through the bank holiday weekend first. So maybe on Paddy's night or Wednesday night we'll start. Right. So whether it's so I've never seen The Sopranos. Okay. So we pick The Sopranos season one, episode one, and when the show finishes at ten o'clock, we'll all watch it together, and then the mm. next morning, yeah. we'll, we'll all share our it. thoughts on it. Can I have one? Can I have a sporting one for people out there? Okay. If you do have Amazon Prime, and I only discovered this completely by accident a couple of weeks ago, they have to stream all of the official FIFA World Cup Ooh. films as narrated by the likes of Michael Caine and Sean Connery and Sean Bean, etc., etc. They are all available. They're beautiful. Uh, archives of, of those particular World Cups. I don't think they have the most recent one up there, but that's okay. You can just go back and watch the classic 70s and 80s ones because they're amazing. So there right. you go. Well, there, that's your that's, box set recommendation. Your that's first our box one. set. First box set First one of the crisis. I'm going to watch that. Do you have Amazon Prime? Yes. I was thinking of getting rid of some of these things, but right now I'm like, no chance. I need them all. <laughs> Disney, sign me up. Keep the kids. Somebody's saying here, oh. can Disney Plus bring forward their launch to this oh, country? Please. Be doing us a great favour. All right. Uh, Joe's going to stick with us. And we have... Coming up uh, between now and 8 o'clock, we're going to hear from Stephen McGuinness from the Players Football Association of Ireland. We'll hear from Alan Milton from the GEA. Roy O'Connor is going to join us as well to talk about what's going on in rugby and the plans there because while some of the future events are cancelled, obviously there's a Six Nations game still on for this weekend. As it stands, the Heineken Champions Cup quarterfinal between Leinster and Saracens is still set to go ahead. And also, there are a couple of sighting decisions due in the next couple of hours against oh, we have Joe them, Marler baby. and Manu Tuolagi. Uh, so we'll talk to Rory about them as well. Go on. Yeah, we have them. Fill me in. Uh, ten weeks for Joe Marler. Right. Uh, four. Uh, let me scroll down on this one just so I get it absolutely right. It's definitely ten weeks for Joe Marler for his, uh, let's put it, interference with Alan Wynne jones Four weeks for Tuolagi for his no-hands tackle on George North. And Courtney Laws for his uh, tackle on uh, Alan Wynne jones Nothing. Nothing. Mm. Scott okay. Free. So we're fortunate to have the face of rugby in Ireland on the line yeah. from, his, from his floor. Joe Malloy, is uh, 10 weeks, is that about right? Well, I was just reading the judgment. These things get incredibly legal. So the entry point for what Marla did was 12 weeks. Now, as ridiculous as it is, he made the strong argument that the wording of the rule mm. is grab, twist or squeeze the genital area. And he said, I, you know, I didn't either with no force. They didn't accept that, however, which is no surprise. So the entry level was 12 weeks, which they gave him. And then they took, I think it was three weeks off that for mitigating circumstances or good behaviour and then added another week on because he'd had another disciplinary issue recently. So that is how they got to 10 weeks. He can't really complain. I mean, it was just idiocy. And when your best defence is, well, the law says grab, squeeze or twist. And I only tickled Alan Wynne Jones's uh, nether regions in front of 10 or 15 million people. They were always going to have to act. Yeah, so 10 weeks for Joe Marlowe. We'll come back to that with Roy O'Connor. Uh, Richie, yeah. it's probably going to take a while, but let's start going through yeah. some of the events that have been cancelled. Uh, the GA, first of all, decided to suspend all activities from midnight tonight until March the 29th. The suspension extends to Camogie and to ladies football as well. And it also covers club, inter-county and educational level games, as well as training sessions. You'll discuss that with Alan Milton later. The Slovakian FA have asked UEFA to postpone this month's Euro 2020 playoff with the Republic of Ireland and Bratislava. The game was due to be played behind closed doors anyway, but the Slovak government has shut down their airports and schools. UEFA is to hold a video conference on Tuesday to discuss its response to the COVID-19 outbreak and how it relates to their competitions. It's reported that the Euros could be deferred until next summer, allowing club competitions to be completed this summer. UEFA, meanwhile, have confirmed that next week's Champions League meetings of Real Madrid and Manchester City and Juventus and Lyon have both been postponed. Both the Real and Juve squads are in quarantine following confirmed coronavirus cases at both clubs. The Real one we should... Uh, note it was part of the basketball squad but they share training facilities with the football team so everybody has gone into lockdown there the SSE or Tristy Leagues have been shelved until March 29th at the earliest the FAI have confirmed that all games under its jurisdiction are to be suspended and it takes effect uh, with tomorrow night's League of Ireland games as you might imagine the PGA Tour say events will continue but as Nathan mentions without any spectators until early April the measure comes into effect for day two of the Players Championship tomorrow the supporter ban is to be lifted just before the Masters you know funnily enough one of the lines you hear a lot is you know sport without fans it's just not on but then you go golf actually it would be grand we were discussing that earlier on of all the sports to go ahead without spectators golf will probably benefit it won't have mashed masses. potato yeah that dude He's constantly mm. there, or people shouting "Baba Booey," mm. or just 
the, the way they dress when they appear on camera. I mean, it's something we can all live without, I'm sure. People in awful ca peaked caps and questionable, you know, shorts and mm. that kind of thing is not going to be on TV, which is only a good thing. I agree with that part, but even just thinking about it more, I, I think we're going to be surprised by how much you miss the crowd at golf because you think of every good golf shot and you, so take the Masters around the 16th green, that par three, or any of the par fives. It's when that ball lands on the green or near the pin and it's the explosion of noise. It's actually just going to seem bizarrely quiet now when that gets no reaction because there'll be nowhere, no one anywhere near the ball and it will just feel ultimately hollow. You'll wonder, did it even happen? And there is something as well magic about a couple of hundred people cramped around the green and they're all going quiet. Hmm. Um, and then you get the explosion of noise. So, uh, look, the, I mean, the game can absolutely proceed and I'd sooner have the Masters without people than not have the Masters. But I, I think we'll be watching it back in, in a couple of years' time and thinking it looked terrible. I think the suggestion is the Masters is actually going to have people there. From what I've read, there's people involved in, in around the... Um, the course there at Augusta are basically planning right. to have people there. So whether that comes to pass, I don't know. And I don't, but I don't think the lifting of the spectator ban coming just at the Valero Texas Open is any coincidence, mm. really. Yeah, we're, we're still four weeks away, and I guess that's <laughs> the one thing, even with all the announcements today, a lot of them are at the earliest, and you see Champions League games... Absolutely, all of them are at the earliest, yeah. ...postponed as to... Do we have a two-month postponement and you can restart these competitions? And that's one of the suggestions around Euro 2020, that it's pushed back to Euro 2021. And that space where Euro 2020 will be till the middle of July can be taken up with the end of the various leagues and the end of the Champions League. And they squeeze it in and you sort of restart again in the middle of mm. August. But we are at the stage of who knows. Yeah, It's total guesswork. And on actually, just on the Masters, finally, uh, Trump obviously imposed a 30-day travel ban last mm. night. So that eats into Masters Week. Now, whatever about fans, there will be lots of players coming from Europe. It may help their cause that Donald Trump happens to like golf and he may unilaterally make, unilaterally make a decision of some kind. But at the moment, those players couldn't travel. What else we got, Richie? Uh, the Pro 14 season, that's been suspended because of the coronavirus outbreak. Organisers say they've made the decision because of the unique challenges of cross-border travel during the competition. Irish club rugby is also on lockdown. As I mentioned, Horse Racing Ireland say action will continue here at home, both with a spectator ban imposed from tomorrow's meeting at Dundalk. There will also be severe restrictions imposed on connections that can attend the course on a day-by-day -day basis. The season opening Australian Grand Prix has been postponed. Earlier, McLaren withdrew from the race after a member of its team tested positive for coronavirus. Two representatives from Haas are also isolating because of COVID-19. Motorsport Ireland have called off all events until March 29th as well, including this weekend's West Cork Rally. Three Leicester players have been put into self-isolation after showing minor symptoms of coronavirus. Brendan Rodgers' team are due to play Watford in the Premier League on Saturday and the Leicester boss says whether they'll miss that game or not is not the main focus. This is about health. This is more than, than football. This is players and their families and children and... Um, so, so any of uh, th those risks, th risks that are there for, for their health and, and everyone else's, we have to uh, mitigate against that. If I hear even a hint mm. of dad cast on radio, I'm turning off. I don't care what mm. happens, as long as the Masters goes ahead, says Owen. <laughs> I wouldn't go for that far now, Owen. I would. Dad cast twice a week and every week. Well, I guess the inevitability for the Premier League is that players will start testing positive. Mm. Yeah. Well, every other major sport, it seems, by now has had players test positive. And like, if Leicester players are putting themselves into self-isolation, why would their game go ahead when Arsenal against Manchester City last night didn't go ahead because one Arsenal yeah. player had shaken hands with the Olympiacos owner two weeks ago? Yeah, mm. and, and on a developing scale, like Wolves rightly uh, kicked up a fuss about having to head to Piraeus tonight for that game with Olympiacos because... Uh, Evangelos Maranakis, the club's owner, had tested positive for coronavirus. Now, all the Olympiacos players and officials and all that have been tested and all of them came back negative. But who's to say that, you know, they're not, they're not being tested on a day-by-day -day basis and somebody might have developed it in the past 24 hours? We don't know. Playing foosball with my wife this Sunday afternoon behind closed doors, though. Happy to stream live for OTB, says Benny and Galway. Stick the camera up, Benny. We're there. Well, I'm just a bit worried <laughs> that foosball is a euphemism. And Benny, that's... that's why did you Why did you go there? Well, I presume that was, was that not the joke. No, no? he wants no. he's playing table football. Oh, okay, he's like, he has right. a table football thing like your man on uh, Home of the Year last week or this week. I didn't see that. There was a bloke on it who looked exactly like Steve-O from the North as well. 
he was like proper mod haircut, mod right. top. And he body is a foosball table. No, but the guy for the foosball table was in a, uh, he lived in a converted barn in Cavan that he wanted to make look like a New York loft, but the only way up to the upper tier was on this kind of laddery thing that you'd have on the side of a, a kid's bunk bed. But I'm wondering how you got the foosball table up there. Either way, fair play to him. I got a 30-day free trial of Amazon Prime. Thank you for letting me know about the World Cup films. France 98, here I come, says Bernard. You are welcome. And it's too early. This is next week's stuff. Mm. I can't recommend this highly enough, lads. Happy on Netflix. Pure brilliant, says David Darcy and Nace. I've yet to see it. Which one's happy? Is that the one with Britta from uh, Community? I don't know. What I've been watching on Netflix, and Joe Malloy, if you haven't said this is Joe, this would suit Malloy down to the ground. Love is Blind, Joe, have you watched this? <laughs> Welcome to last week, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the best edited TV program I've ever seen. I sit there in disgust watching every episode, and then they finish on this brilliant cliffhanger where I'm like, Oh my God, just let me see what happens here. Look, it's, the, it's the worst TV of all time. It, it is a disgrace. It is a disgrace, but it's a yeah, must-watch TV. All right, we'll, we'll, lots more of that to come over the, uh, the coming <laughs> weeks. Let's not, let's not ruin it all tonight. Episode by episode of Love is we got, we got a wrap, Richie, week. but just run us through a couple of other things. Uh, the ATP Tour cancelled uh, the next six weeks' worth of events in the States. Major League Baseball, the NHL and MLS are all suspending their seasons. Cheltenham, though, continuing uh, unaffected. 50-1 to one shot. Liz Nager, Oscar pulled off a huge shock today with victory in the Stairs hurdle elsewhere. The right, Willie Mullins Trey Min held off a late challenge from St. Calvados to claim the Ryanair chase. An eighth place finish for Apple's Jade, who's retired after today. We mentioned those bands from Marler and Co. Mm. And we should just mention before I head off. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Killian Riverstick has been uh, in touch. Lads, there is some actual live sport happening, you know. All his relentless juggernaut is rolling on. That it is. They're 2 0 up away to LASK of uh, Linz in Austria at the moment. Audi Nagallo got the opening goal of the game, and a uh, decent one it was, too. Daniel James has doubled their lead. Basel 2-0 up away to Eintracht Frankfurt at the moment. Uh, Istanbul, Basak here and Copenhagen are scoreless. Still to come tonight, Rangers playing Bayer Leverkusen and behind closed doors in Piraeus, Olympiakos taking on Wolves. Joe, thank you. Go get some colour samples and come back to us. Evening, gents. Have a good one. All right. Jerry's watches. Richie, thank you. So the plan for the evening football show coming up from 9 o'clock, we'll talk to the Sheffield United manager, Chris Wilder, what a season they've been having. And we'll also hear from John Giles as well on the week's football show. Between 8 and 9, we will talk to Rory O'Connor about those bans from Marla and Tuolagi and also about the state of play in rugby right now in terms of postponements and what's going to happen with the Champions Cup quarterfinals. We'll also be across to Cheltenham to check in with John Duggan as the festival rolls on with day three. But up next, we're going to talk about the postponements in the GEA with Alan Milton and first Stephen McGuinness from the PFAI. Off the ball on News Talk.